Hello and welcome to the video. So today I'm going to do a book review. Now this is something that was requested in the comments but it's also something I've been thinking about doing for a while. Um, and the idea here is to take a book about perfumery and to do a quick review. So say what's in the book and if I think the book is good or bad, how useful it would be or what kind of position you might need to be in for the book to help you. Is it for a bit more of a beginner or more of an advanced person who's learning perfumery? And my opinion hopefully will help you decide if the book is worth buying for you. Um, and the reason I think this is important is because some of the perfumery books out there can be really, really expensive. So I think it definitely helps to have an idea beforehand if the book is actually going to be something that's useful to you or not. So today's review is going to be on Perfume the Alchemy of Scent. Now, I have already talked about this book on my channel. However, the reason I'm doing a video on this book in particular first is because I do believe this is potentially the best book that you could buy if you're a beginner for a number of reasons. And I'm going to get into those reasons in this video. Um, but firstly, I'm going to give a brief overview of the context of the book and what's inside it. So this book is written by Jean-Claude Elena. Now, if you haven't already heard of him, he is one of the most famous perfumers in the world. He used to work for Hermes or Hermes, which is a French luxury perfume brand. And he made lots of perfumes for them, which were very successful and has also made perfumes for other brands, which were quite successful. One of the reasons that this is important is because this is a book that's written by a professional perfumer. It's not written just by someone who doesn't really know what they're doing. This is written by one of the best in the industry, which means you can get a lot of wisdom and insight from this book that you wouldn't necessarily get elsewhere. So what is the structure of this book? Well, it's got 11 chapters um, and I'll go through roughly what each of them are. So the first one is about kind of the history of modern perfumery and roughly the changes that happened in the last kind of few centuries and decades and how that shaped the world of perfumery, which is a good, I think, introduction to, it kind of helps you understand how perfumery itself as an art has evolved over time. Right, the second chapter is about the nose itself and how we smell things. It talks a little bit about how the nose is actually wired up to the brain and it talks about detection threshold, which is an important concept, and vapor pressure, which is another useful concept. Then in chapter three, we start talking about materials and substances. Now, this is probably one of the best chapters in the book. It talks firstly about the different kinds of materials. So if you don't understand your absolutes from your essential oils and what these things are, how these uh, differ, for example, from synthetics, what's the difference between naturals and synthetics, this or that, this chapter gives a great overview of all of that. Now, in this chapter is one of the highlights of the book, which is a listing of materials that Jean-Claude Elena uses to construct his perfumes out of. So this is essentially his perfumery palette of such. Um, now, this is a really good reference because if you've not heard of these ingredients before or if you don't know what you might want to be starting to buy, this is a great reference in the sense that it shows you a real perfumer who's at the top of their game. What materials do they use to make perfumes out of? What uh, materials do they have in their palette? So this can give you a lot of inspiration in terms of working out, for example, what kind of things you might want to buy uh, next and also working out maybe which materials are not so important. So the fourth chapter talks a little bit about techniques for learning perfumery. Um, this is mostly kind of a couple of little games on, for example, how you can cover up the bottles and then test them to test your memory of the um, ingredients. Um, definitely useful. This chapter also gives you some classifications and groupings of materials. So if you don't know where to get started on how to categorize your ingredients, what's the difference between, for example, green or floral, um, this chapter gives you some good insights on that as well. The fifth chapter then gives you some advice on how you might start mixing together different ingredients and kind of the thought process that you might use when you go about that. Um, it also talks about a concept called olfactory illusions, which I think is another one of the highlights of the book. Um, and it's Jean-Claude's concept effectively that you can use two or more different ingredients together, which give an effect which is more than the sum of their parts. The idea is roughly that when you mix two ingredients in perfumery, you never actually lose those two ingredients. You can kind of always smell that the individual things are there if you look hard enough with your nose. But in some situations, when you've got 
for example, two ingredients, they can actually give you the illusion of something else, a kind of effect of something completely different, as if it were a third ingredient that were there. Um, so one example of this is if you were to mix fructone and benzyl acetate, he says, okay, well, this gives you the illusion of an apple. Now, I tried this one particularly, I don't know if it actually smells that much like an apple, but it does smell a bit like the apple boiled sweets that they used to make. What is really good is there is a table inside the book which gives you some basic combinations for some fruit accords. So it basically tells you what you need to combine to make apple, peach, pear, strawberry, wild strawberry and raspberry. Um, it gives you a list of the ingredients and which ones combine together to make those fruits. So that's a really great place to start if you would like to kind of start blending things and you don't really know where to start. Now, after this point, the rest of the chapters in the book start talking a bit more about kind of the actual industry. Um, chapter six talks about a perfume itself. So this is kind of the final stage. If you had the ingredients, the accords, and then the final perfume, it talks a little bit about um, different types of perfumes, different families of perfumes. The seventh chapter is just kind of some different thoughts about how perfumes change over time. The eighth chapter is on marketing. Um, this chapter is basically a rough idea of how how marketing works in the fragrance industry. So it's not necessarily going to help you make a perfume, but if you're interested in perfumery and especially making uh, perfumes maybe to sell one day, um, or even if you're not interested in, in making them to sell, but you're interested in understanding kind of how the whole perfumery market as a whole works, um, this chapter gives you a bit of insight into how marketers in the fragrance industry think usually about marketing their products. Now, chapter nine is about bringing the product to market. And this talks about firstly, the manufacturing, how the manufacturing's done, what kind of rules and guidelines the manufacturing has to adhere to, and then the necessary kind of regulations and laws and safety things that need to be sorted out as well. In all, and all of this is kind of required as such in order to legally bring a perfume to the market. So again, if you're interested in ever selling your perfumes or bringing them to the market, it's definitely very important that you know about all of these things. So this is another great section of the book. Even if you're just looking at making perfumes yourself, it's still interesting to know exactly what kind of level of quality control would actually need to be applied to your perfume in order for it to be legal to actually sell on the market. Now, chapter 10 is a quick overview of the leading players or the leading companies in the fragrance industry. Um, so there are certain suppliers, especially suppliers that make ingredients uh, like Givaudan and Firminiche. Um, I talk about these or I might mention them in some of my videos because sometimes I might use a base from one of those companies or I might use, for example, an essential oil or an absolute, which is manufactured by them. So, for example, in one of my videos, I think I have lavender from Payne Bertrand. Um, that's quite a big producer of natural products, which is also talked about in this book, amongst many others. So it's good kind of to have an idea of the major companies um, which produce the kind of quality um, widely used in the industry perfume ingredients as such, because they're a good thing to kind of keep an eye out for when you're, for example, choosing materials and maybe you don't know which brand of a certain thing you might want to buy. Um, and finally, the last chapter is on protection of perfumes. So this is basically, can you copyright a perfume? Can you trademark it? How do you, how do you navigate that kind of intellectual property um, area as such if you have a perfume formula? So all of this is wrapped up in just over 100 pages. However, it is very, I would say, concisely written. There is a lot of information in a small space. And one of the best features of this book is that it's actually very cheap. Now, perfumery books can cost, um, they can cost lots of money. I've seen perfumery books go for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Um, but this one you can usually pick up for less than 20 pounds on the internet. And this is probably one of the main reasons as well that I would recommend this book because in perfume, in terms of perfumery books, you have a lot of advanced books, a lot of expensive books, a lot of rare books, and then you have a lot of cheap basic books. However, normally these cheap uh, basic books are quite often not full of maybe the best content. Um, so this is kind of the one case in which there is a book which is extremely well written, full of great information, but also cheap. 
and this is why I would probably recommend this as the best perfumery book for beginners. So if I had to give it a uh, kind of a star rating, I would probably give it five stars out of five. Um, really good. And yeah, I would definitely recommend you pick yourself up one of these books. So I will try to put a link in the description of the video in case you can't find it online. Um, and hopefully I will be doing some more of these book reviews in the future. If there is a certain perfumery book you're interested in uh, being reviewed as well, let me know and I will see if I have it or not. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, have a lovely week and I will see you soon.